welcome everyone to tonight's Citizens Climate University. Uh, it's a weekly webinar program of Citizens Climate Lobbies that provides CSL supporters like you and I with access to in-depth training opportunities on topics related to climate change and effective climate advocacy. I'm your host, Brett Cease, and tonight's topic is specifically going to focus on working with other organizations and allies. In this training, we're going to explore how to engage and partner with other organizations in a respectful, understanding, and productive way and feature some examples from throughout the country of what CCL chapters are doing to build these essential connections, as well as understanding how to best interface with your own local groups that might be representatives of national organizations. So to get us there, the esteemed Taylor Krauss, CCL's National Outreach and Partnership Coordinator. Taylor first started at CCL as an intern with our headquarters in San Diego, and then became staff support for CCL's executive director, Mark Reynolds, after two years there. Taylor joined CCL's government affairs team in Washington, D.C., where she is now the National Outreach and Partnership Coordinator and supports building relationships and collaborations with various national level groups and congressional offices. And when she's not having fun doing that, she's busy earning her master's in science at Johns Hopkins in energy policy and climate. So thanks so much for joining us tonight, Taylor. We are so honored to have everyone else tuning in. And with that, the floor is yours. We're looking forward to learning from you. Great. Thank you for that warm welcome, Brett. Um, it's so great to see everyone tonight and thank you for coming. Um, before we start, I think it's appropriate to mention that we are in extraordinary times and that everyone's bandwidth um, is going to be varying tremendously depending on where they are, what their job is, so just to be conscious of that. Um, so we should be um, practicing a lot of patience when working with each other, especially while working with organizations that are outside of Citizens Climate Lobby. Um, and they might not just be as comfortable as we are to meet together on Zoom. Um, so everybody should be taking care of yourself. Um, you should be hopefully staying home and helping flattening that curve. Um, you can have opportunities to volunteer from home um, and participate in online trainings like this and be facilitating virtual meetings um, with your members of Congress or your own chapters and other local leaders. So to start off, um, we should start thinking about um, what steps we should take. Um, and for the most part, our CCL staff um, handles most of the relationships with national groups um, and their staff, and then volunteers facilitate um, outreach to local groups. And this has um, really been the most effective means of dividing outreach in, in our experience. So before we jump into the creative part, um, I want to go through some quick housekeeping steps um, before you start your outreach, just to make sure that you're using your time wisely. So first, um, there might already be an awesome CCLer that is already doing the outreach um, to a group that you had in mind. Therefore, we have an online um, tracking system called the Grass Tops Engagement Tracker, or we call it the GET, um, which is available on community like all of our other resources. A link to the Grass Tops Engagement Tracker, thank you, Brett, just drop in the chat, um, but it will also be provided in the read guide of this training afterward that you can again access on CCL Community. Um, and there's also a tutorial available in terms of how to use this. Um, so now that you've checked the get, um, let's say the group that you're looking for um, isn't popping up, which means you probably are the first person to be doing the outreach to this group. So once you start your outreach, um, please log your outreach so the next person um, can know of all the wonderful actions that you're taking and we can just um, make sure that we are keeping in line with each other and someone isn't replicating your great idea. So if you are super interested um, in a national group and where CCL's relationship stands there, you are welcome to reach out to me um, and I'd be happy to tell you more about it. And as you can see from the slide, this is what the Grass Tops Engagement Tracker looks like. Um, and it's pretty user-friendly and we have tons of resources for you in order to navigate it. So next up is who should we be doing outreach to? So now that we have housekeeping out of the way, um, let's talk about picking groups to reach out to. Sometimes it does feel like there are endless amounts of groups that we can be doing outreach to, and this can be really overwhelming. 
take it from me, that's a lot of what my job is. But I always like to remind folks that you should be focusing on outreach um, to groups that matter to your member of Congress or are a good partner within your community. With that said, it can, always, um, it can also be useful to reach out to groups that are in your local climate ecosystem. These groups um, may not have the same priorities as CCL or work on carbon pricing, but it's always a good practice to be friendly with your neighbors, especially since CCL is playing the long game and we are going to need a really broad coalition um, of folks to pass a bill. So, um, however, when thinking about outreach, I'd like to remind you that CCL is a nonpartisan organization, which is something that unfortunately is pretty rare these days. Um, so I just like to remind volunteers to please be conscious of this. Um, you will come across groups um, that are partisan and especially groups um, that matter to your Democrat or your Republican members of Congress. So just be judicious in your choices for collaboration with other groups and how working with them could be affecting your relationships with your member of Congress. So now that you've considered if this group is important to your member of Congress or your community and working with them wouldn't damage your relationship with them, um, let's talk about meeting with that group. Just like preparing for your meetings with your member of Congress, you should be doing research before making contact. You should know the organization's profile as well as some background about its local leadership, what kinds of work they participate in, other initiatives, and start thinking of ways that you can collaborate. If you aren't super sure about a particular group, um, you can always reach out to a state or regional coordinator um, who may have some previous experience with this group or can point you in the direction of another CCL volunteer who does have experience. And um, again, you're always welcome to reach out to me if you get stuck. Like I said, there are tons of other groups you can be tr um, reaching out to, but CCL has been around for a little bit and there, are, there is an initial um, list of other national nonprofits that have local chapters that we've facilitated relationships with. And you can definitely consider reaching out to and engaging in a dialogue. Um, and again, this um, big list is going to be available in the read guide, but um, I'll just read through it really quickly. So League of Women Voters, the Audubon Society, um, Trout Unlimited, League of Conservation Voters, the American Association of um, University of Women, Sierra Club, Indivisible, 350.org, the Sunrise Movement, Climate Reality. And these are some national groups and there might be some um, local environmental climate action organizations or labor groups that um, are more specific to where you are. Um, so an example being the Chesapeake Climate Action Network. And again, please focus on outreach to your local groups and these organizations have proven um, to be really useful when going to your members of Congress and your lobby meetings. And CCL staff members like myself and the DC team um, have an ongoing relationship for the most part with most national organizations. Um, but if you'd like more info on where these relationships stands or inquiries or more tidbits before you do um, local outreach to those local chapters, again, you're welcome to um, reach out to me and Brett has put my email in the chat and I'm sure you can find it online or in this read guide afterward. So now that you've picked, um, now that we've talked about how to pick the group to do outreach to, um, let's talk about meeting with them. Meeting with other organizations um, is a little bit different than meeting with your member of Congress. Really, CCL has a stellar reputation on the Hill of being a group um, that offices really love to meet with because we do base our meetings in appreciation, gratitude, and respect. So let's keep that up um, when working with other groups. As much as I'm sure your member of Congress enjoys meeting with you, they really are still your elected representatives and they are obligated to meet with you. Therefore, it is worth mentioning that other groups are not obligated in the same way to work with us and manifesting good relationships um, with other groups can require a little bit more romancing and nuance. So when going into a meeting with another group, it's always been useful for me and a good practice and keep in mind just a few main goals. 
first is that relationships really matter and they can be delicate. Therefore, I like to think of any conversation as opening up the door, opening up a door rather than winning a debate. And it's really easy um, to do this by just being humble, nonpartisan, and using your effective communication and listening skills that we train our volunteers to use in their meetings with their members of Congress. Again, humility, um, authenticity, and demonstrating long-term commitments um, also really seem to go a long way and they really help achieve this goal of building relationships. Next um, goal is striving to develop that long-term respectful and mutually beneficial relationship. We always hope that with every group, um, we can continue to work together on key areas of overlap. And those might not be possible right now, um, but always leaving the door open um, for the future is something that you should always keep in mind. And lastly, um, the ultimate goal here really is to build trust. With that said, um, you joined CCL for a reason and the other person probably joined their organization for a reason. And our groups might differ on how um, to get to the emissions reductions level that we're looking for or to address climate change um, or bipartisanship. But um, we really do share that common vision of an emissions-free future. So remember, you're not alone. Um, practice courage, keep learning, and you can always default to talking about your group shared vision if you're not able to really agree upon um, how to get there. So when working toward these, towards these goals, it's always good to assume that carbon fee and dividend is not the best or only climate solution. I, I like to reiterate the fact that CCL's mission is to build political will for a livable world. And carbon fee and dividend is currently the most politically viable solution that is in line with the science-based emissions targets outlined in, the, outlined in the IPCC. And so that's why CCL is throwing its support behind um, carbon fee and dividend. So it is possible that your meeting can just be a friendly meeting to introduce yourself, but it is also possible that some actions can come for the meeting, that you can ask to meet with the steering committee or the leadership team to discuss possible collaborations. You can give a presentation that would be of interest um, to their group or something that CCL does well. Um, so an example is that you can um, give a presentation on the impacts of climate change, especially those at the local level that your organizations are operating in. Um, you can give a presentation on how to facilitate grassroots organizing. Um, you can plan a joint outreach and educational event. Bring your chapter um, members together for a virtual social event, or hopefully in the future, a real in-person social event. Um, you can draw a member of Congress's attention to specified um, climate change impacts to your um, local area. Um, again, these joint actions could be through a joint lobby meeting. Um, lot, different offices are meeting with um, their constituents online. You can facilitate a joint op-ed um, or some other joint letter to a congressional office. Um, you can also ask um, ultimately for uh, endorsement of the Energy Innovation Act um, from that local chapter, but um, just a little note, a lot of these local chapters of larger national organizations usually take the lead of their national organization. Um, and that's not always the case. Some chapters can act pretty autonomously. Um, and they, but just keep in mind, they might not have the ability to endorse. And I think it dovetails really well um, off this last possible ask that really focusing on the relationship is just as important as getting an endorsement. Um, so don't get discouraged that if you're not able to get an endorsement right out of the gate. Um, I think that is a lot more valuable to get creative on ways that you can work together. Um, you all are expert relationship builders with your members of Congress. And this really is a skill that CCL is betting the farm on and we fully trust you to do. Um, so really just trust yourself in what you think is necessary to build that relationship. And going on, on why does this matter? Um, so now that we've covered 
who you're reaching out to um, and how to reach out to them, we really should think about how, why this matters to reach out to them. Well, CCL can't do this alone. Passing any bill through Congress requires a broad coalition of voices, especially as it pertains to this bill or carbon pricing, because if this were to get passed, it would affect the whole economy and thus affect those who depend on the economy, um, which given the current state of play for everything, we can see that really is everyone. So we would want a solution that everybody is at the table to advocate for. And so like any movement, the climate movement is especially stronger in numbers. We do not expect that every group is going to be agreeing on the Energy Innovation Act um, or wanting to work on carbon fee and dividend or wanting to work on carbon pricing, and that's okay. Other groups may not even be working on federal policy, but there really is value um, in having multiple sides and angles. If a member of Congress is hearing that they need to have a climate solution um, that is good for people, it's good for the economy, and it's good for the environment, carbon fee and dividend or the Energy Innovation Act can um, organically rise on their radar. Again, we should keep in mind that um, helping other groups helps us and forming those relationships is the most important part of building a climate, a strong climate coalition. I know I keep um, mentioning the climate movement and the climate ecosystem. So um, we should be I, I'm definitely going to go into um, what that looks like and how CCL fits in that. So first, um, we have what are known as our traditional big greens. So those are groups like the Sierra Club, the Environmental Defense Fund, um, the NRDC, so National Resource Defense Council, um, League of Conservation Voters, National Wildlife Federation, Audubon, the Nature Conservancy, and a lot of your traditional groups that you think of when thinking of environmentalism. Then we have some smaller environmental groups um, that also work on climate as well. So Elders Climate Action Network, Moms Clean Air Force, um, the Chesapeake Climate Action Network that I mentioned as an example earlier, um, and the Sunrise Movement. There are also groups that aren't just purely for environmentalism, but they're also for um, environmental justice. Um, groups like We Act, um, Green for All, Food and Water Watch. Um, there are also groups that are dubbed eco-right groups. So groups like Republican, um, Niskanen, Conserve America, Young Conservatives for Climate Action, the Climate Lit Climate Leadership Council, CLC, not to be confused with CCL, but CLC. Um, and lastly, there are groups that are relatively peripheral to climate change. Um, so groups that work on climate, but also have some other main topics. So there's groups that are like conservation minded groups, um, faith based groups, national security groups, renewable energy groups, labor groups, and um, the list does go on, but just to give you a little taste of what's out there. So thinking about what the climate ecosystem is, where does CCL fit into all this? Well, um, these groups in the climate ecosystem, you can see um, only some of them only work with one party of Congress. And there are also groups that exert pressure on Congress to act on climate, um, through protests or affirmative action. And while this is different from CCL's objectives, it really is useful um, because when you think about it, these groups are exerting pressure on Congress to act. And when the time comes, CCL um, will be the trusted relationship that we've built over a long time and resource um, there with the solutions that are in the middle of the road and also has the built up grassroots and grass top support behind it. So to summarize the ecosystem, being a bipartisan organization really is something that is rare these days. So CCL tries to occupy the middle, the far middle to be more exact. I hope you all have been keeping up um, with our campaign launch for this. And we're going to be an organization that is for solutions. 
and for things, not someone that opposes um, different solutions and opposes other people, which I know is really, really easy to do. And so CCL really tries actively to not participate in that kind of dialogue. We aim to bring everybody together um, in the climate movement um, or to the carbon pricing conversation. We've played the inside game with grassroots, um, which really is a novel concept that I have to admit very few other groups um, are not only able to do, but able to do at the scale that CCL um, is able to do. Um, from my experience, I do attend a lot of round tables and I'm part of tons of coalitions. And I am consistently told time and time again from other um, groups, especially big green groups, how impressed they are um, with our volunteers. CCL is not only known for having the most comprehensive um, grassroots organization that pertains to climates, um, climate change, but our volunteers are really well trained and um, our values of respect and gratitude that are practiced in our meetings and with members of Congress really do go a long way and it doesn't go unnoticed and you guys just all around rock. So this means that our major strength is that we have a lot of people and we have a lot of people that are well organized, trained and are everywhere. So um, to wrap this up, I just wanna to touch on the fact that there are going to be instances um, where you do not have overlapping work to do with other groups and that's okay. Um, it is perfectly fine to coexist um, without having to work with each other because it really is easier to demonize someone that you haven't ever met before. And a reason that um, CCL likes to introduce ourselves to everyone and especially to those um, who even oppose us. Um, and how to work with other groups. Um, you can also partner with other organizations um, on things like general education um, to the public about climate change, um, the science of it, what impacts are going on, especially the local effects, again, um, that pertain to your member of Congress. And then um, both your organizations can present possible solutions out there. It doesn't just have to be the Energy Innovation Act or carbon pricing. And Again, I mentioned some ways that you um, can do this joint effort, um, which will eventually be something like tabling events or town halls or moving screenings. But I think now more than ever is a time to get really, really creative. And again, helping um, other groups is something that I, I have been using pretty often um, in terms of talking with how climate or other advocacy groups are now organizing um, given the circumstances in operating in a very virtual world. So as climate change becomes more and more impactful, um, there are going to be more and more people that are concerned and therefore groups are going to want to start outlining how their groups um, actually intend to address climate change. A lot of the coalitions that I build are amongst groups that don't have a climate plan. Um, so you can help other groups who aren't climate leaders yet become a climate champion in their own way. An example is Trout Unlimited um, works on conserving cold water fisheries um, for trout. And as you can imagine, they've seen the drastic effects of climate change on the fisheries and they have tried to preserve. Um, so they came to find CCL and have grown into a really um, useful partner in the climate um, change realm and since partnering with us um, have moved up the ladder of climate change advocacy and have even started a climate change um, coordinator within their own local chapters that um, CCL coordinates with on on a state level. So with that said, um, just keep an open mind. There are many groups that I meet with who aren't branded as environmental groups and are just trying to start to think through their organization's first stance on climate change, let alone thinking through what policy solutions they're just going to get behind. So it is really effective um, to consider timing. So just be aware that where the group is at, like in their climate policy and where the timing is, they might be having like a really big upcoming conference that um, you're not aware of and is taking up all their bandwidth. 
um, or they have some kind of board meeting um, or some kind of other external event that is keeping them from um, focusing their attention. It might be more fruitful to be helpful in providing them just um, resources on climate science or building up their grassroots organizing efforts so that you can work on building that trust that I mentioned is the most important for a lasting relationship earlier. And then down the road, asking um, what their thoughts are on carbon pricing or the bill we support um, and working them up the ladder of support. Talking about bills or endorsements too soon is something that might be a little bit scary um, for a group, especially one that really might just be dipping their toe into the big, big topic of climate change. Regardless of where the group is, I always love to brag about how amazing all of you are and CCL in general, because we have over 200,000 supporters um, and it is always climbing. Also, our network of people is comprised of members around the world um, who are part of all kinds of different industries. So if there's um, there's always a connection to be made and you are the perfect person to make that connection happen. So you can mention um, Citizens um, Climate Community, um, which is our own internal Facebook, the over 50 action teams that we have, um, and the laser talks that we have. The list goes on and on um, of all the impressive resources and online infrastructure that um, you can always offer to other groups to help them out. And the last um, option for ways to help, um, to ways to work with other groups is that there are tons of CCL groups around the country who are working on state carbon pricing. Um, and we actually have a, a, carbon, a state carbon pricing policy coordinator who plugs in to existing carbon pricing efforts um, or starts their own um, state carbon pricing um, initiative. And so state policies don't necessarily have to be carbon fee and dividend. There are plenty of local efforts um, that align with our work. And so you can think of um, RPS, grid upgrades, solar policy, et cetera. Um, and if you want help, advice, or general encouragement and inspiration, um, my colleague, Jamie DeMarco, um, is our state level carbon pricing coordinator that I mentioned, and he would be happy to, to see where your state is at in ways that you can get involved um, on state policy. What a wonderful review, Taylor. Thank you so much for walking us through all of the different considerations and advice that you have through your years of really helping support all of our groups walk through this process and building key relationships with local organizations and their networks. What we're going to do here before our wrap up tonight is actually hear from the stories of two of our wonderful action teams and leaders within them that have taken this advice and this approach that Taylor's really walked through and highlighted that in their own local work. So first up, we'll learn from Bill Blancano, CCL Regional Coordinator, and a connection that he made with Trout Unlimited, the chapter in his area. And then we'll have Bill Barron, CCL's Regional Coordinator out in the Mountain West, and co-leader of our Outdoor Industry Action Team talk about all the success the Outdoor Industry Action Team has had with building these strategic relationships with local outdoor organizations. All right, take it away, Bills. This is Bill Blancato. I am, um, I guess, chap group leader for the Winston-Salem chapter in North Carolina. I'm also state coordinator for South Carolina and a regional coordinator for the Southeast region. And last year, Oh, I guess it was about in the spring, uh, we got word that Trout Unlimited had endorsed HR 763. And I thought, uh, well, this is an opportunity to go do a little outreach with a local chapter. Um, we have a lot of trout fishing in North, Western North Carolina. All, it happens to be in my congressional district uh, with a very conservative congressperson. And I thought that reaching out to the Trout Unlimited folks who as I understand it, are a mix of liberal conservative folks who just like getting outside and fishing uh, might, might be a good thing. And uh, looked them up online, found the chapter. Fortunately, I, I sent an email and within a day I had a response. Um, and within a day I had a time set to go speak to them. 
uh, which was a lot of fun. I learned about them, uh, some of the outreach they do in schools and raising fish and releasing fish into the trout streams. Um, and and uh, unfortunately never had any follow-up with them, but it was a great speaking opportunity that got the word out about CCL. And um, that's that was my success with Trout Unlimited. I, I encourage anyone to look them up online. Um, they're a good group of folks. Uh, it was fun to meet with them and you might make some connections. Uh, and there may be members of your chapter that like the outdoors who might also be interested in joining Trout Unlimited. I was impressed by the organization, their outreach in schools, their passion for trout streams, fishing rivers, and the environment in general. Seeking. And I'll, you know, I'll just say that um, I really wanted to say that I really invite uh, CCL volunteers to look for our local chapters find our chapter leaders and seek us out and come to our meetings and uh, look for a partnership uh, and you know, really come to us and push us along. I would say we're just beginning to really develop that partnership on the ground. And uh, before I left, if there's one thing I wanted to do was make sure I invited CCL volunteers to really seek us out at the local level and come and talk to us and work with us. Hi, my name is Bill Barron, and I'm the regional coordinator for the Mountain West. I cover the states of Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Nevada. I'm also co-lead of the Outdoor Industry Action Team. And I co-lead it with uh, Matt Tucker, who's an awesome guy. He lives in uh, Truckee, California, has done great work in organizing and helping develop and expand our organization. And why do we feel like this area is, of outreach is so important? I think it's because what we see is that really the impact on the outdoor industry is, can be seen as the canary in the coal mine. And so people are, uh, who are drawn to the outdoors and recreation have really seen the changes that are happening day to day and year to year. And I think it's, it's something that really hits home for a lot of people. And people are concerned about the, the environment that they've, they recreate in. Some of the key success stories I would say was having a volunteer who knew a friend who knew Alex Honnold, uh, the climber who, who climbed uh, El Cap without ropes. And uh, we were able to connect through him and he did an endorsement video for us that uh, we're really excited about. The endorsements that we've gotten from the U.S. cross-country ski team and other outdoor athletes that have a lot of uh, social media recognition, recognition. And so they're able to convey their support for our bill uh, for the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act and, uh, and really have helped uh, raise awareness in their communities for, um, you know, a, a solution that really uh, can get a lot of support from uh, lots of outdoor enthusiasts. And we have also seen through the endorsement by the National Ski Area Association, which is a national trade association for the uh, ski industry, uh, that by getting their endorsement, we've been able to use that to leverage getting endorsements, not just by state trade organizations like Ski Utah, uh, California Ski Areas Association, Pacific Northwest Ski Areas Association, and others, including Ski Vermont on the East Coast, that these uh, endorsements are really effective in drawing attention for getting endorsements in other areas. How you can get involved? Uh, we invite you to join our Outdoor Industry Action Team, and we have a monthly call. It's on the fourth Monday of the month. Uh, at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if you go to the Outdoor Industry Action Team page in community and join that organization, you'll automatically get emails notifying you of our upcoming meetings, as well as uh, follow-up information from those meetings. So please join us. We'd love to have your help and, uh, and continue to expand on the endorsements that we've collected. And just one word of note, as Bill has highlighted here, all of these action teams are available for any CCL volunteer that would like to get more activated. It's another wonderful way that you can plug in and take action, 
building those grass tops connections like Taylor's highlighted in your own local community with these specific sectors. Thanks again for sharing. And with that, um, I want to just summarize. Um, feel free to reach out to your local chapters and check in with me about national groups. Make sure you're using your time wisely um, while doing outreach by focusing on groups that matter to your member of Congress or are helpful to connect to um, in your community. And make sure to check the Grass Tops engagement tracker. Um, meet the groups where they are. And the main objective, again, is to build trust and that long-term relationship and the rest will come. And that's pretty much all that I have to say for tonight and look forward to getting all of your questions. Right on, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mayor Taylor. And it's just so helpful to hear your review. So we look forward first and foremost to hearing more about the stories of where you are going to go with your ongoing relationship development and working with other orgs. We hope you found tonight's training useful. And if there's anything else that we can do, please feel free to reach out. Thank you all again. I'll unmute all lines. Thank you for Thanks. having this meeting. Thank you. Hey, Thanks, Taylor. Uh, Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Appreciate guys. it. Thank you, Taylor. There. Thank you for listening to this episode of Citizens Climate Lobby's training program. You can tune into more episodes anywhere podcasts are available. Inspired by what you heard today? Join Citizens Climate Lobby to advocate for bipartisan climate solutions. Go to community.citizensclimate.org to find more trainings, resources, your local chapter, national action teams, discussion forums, and more. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citizens Climate. We also invite all of our listeners to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiration. And together, we are creating the political will for a livable world.